Welcome, welcome, welcome to this worship experience online. My name is Johnny Simpson. I'm a senior pastor here at Faith United Methodist Church in Dickinson, Texas, and we are so glad to have you worshiping with us. If this is your first time worshiping with us online, I need your help. If you could please text the word CONNECT to 281-336-1698. Again, that is the word CONNECT to 281 281- Three three six one six nine eight. I would love to get in contact with you after this worship experience so we could talk about Jesus Christ and the pardoning of your sins. Now, if this is your first time watching or your 100th time watching, we need your help as well. If you could please like and comment and share this video, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or on our website, the more people that like and comment and share, the more that helps the algorithm so that more people can know about us. You are one second away from being able to worship with your friends and family all over the world, no matter where you are physically located. We have a wonderful worship experience in store for you. We're going to affirm our faith and then sing the Gloria Patri and then be led in worship and music. God bless you and thank you for joining us today. Now we will affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Holy, 
holy is your name mighty mighty let all the earth proclaim you are worthy so worthy there is no one like you God we worship you in spirit and in truth you are holy so holy holy is your name you are mighty let all the earth proclaim you are worthy Lord so worthy Lord there is no one like you and we worship it's spirit and in truth and we worship you it's spirit and in truth in truth
Good morning, faith family and friends. It is time to go boldly to the throne of grace. Would you please bow your heads and pray along with me? To Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the Father, we say that we thank thee, we adore thee, because you came to save us and set us free. Father, we want to thank you for bringing us into the sanctuary so that we can put on the garment of praise and seek, seek things that align us with things eternal. So help us to have righteousness Help us to have holiness. Help us to take the things that you have taught us and apply it in our daily lives. Father, we know that we have fallen short of your glory. And we ask for your forgiveness and to have mercy upon us. Because only you can clean us up, Lord. But we want to thank you for being a God of reconciliation and giving us the ability to reconcile with you and one another. Because, Father, how can we love a God that we don't see if we cannot love the ones that we see? The ones that we see that need some loving kindness the ones that need forgiveness, the ones that have no faith, to have faith through your word and your will. Because all means all to you. And Christ, you are our all in all. This world's riches and possessions are temporary, but help us to focus on those things that will carry us day after day and from generation to generation. And that's aligning ourselves with you and your word and your will. Father, we're only passing through this land. So help us get the knowledge and the wisdom so that we can share it and take it forward. Help us to be about the assignment you have given to us so that the ones that come after us can live life and live it so abundantly. Father, this world is in need of your love. This world is in need of you, the Savior, which means that we have work to do to carry the gospel forward because it's not if, it's a matter of when you're going to come back and claim us. And we want to be ready. And we want to do the assignment you have given us to do because you have been so loving towards us. Father, help us not to be a selfish people because all have the same basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter because we know where it comes from and it comes from Thee. So let us prepare to hear the spoken word so that we can be more about the mission field and what you have for us. Because we're not meant to stay, but to pass through, Lord. But while we're here, help us to show love, to show pardon where there's injury, to show love where there is hatred, to give hope where there is despair. Because it's 
is in giving that we receive. And if it hadn't been for you on our side, where would we be? Help us to be about your business, Father. Your son showed us the way through his teaching and his preaching and him modeling what we are to do. So teach us, mold us, and Father, help us to know that we need to still away and learn more about the one that we love. And it is in your precious son's name that we ask these things for deliverance, for guidance, for healing, for strength, for courage, everything we need, you will you will provide according to your riches and glory. We ask it all in Jesus Christ's name as we praise him and lift him up. In Jesus' name, we say these things. Amen. Good morning, people of faith. You are watching Faith TV and I'm your host, Delana Gilmore. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for this worship experience online. Remember, if you missed a service live, that's okay. You can go to Faith UMC's Facebook page. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or check the church website later on for all the archived messages. And now for some faith news and notes. Email DickinsonFaithUMC at gmail.com so we can have your correct contact information and keep in touch. Submit your prayer request to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash prayer. All requests are confidential unless you would like them placed on the prayer list. Our summer feeding programs are going on this week, breakfast from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and lunch from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And finally, Church Council is Monday, August 1st at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is 891-6103-7945. The passcode is Council. Well, church family, as always, there's a lot going on at Faith. Be sure to check the website and follow us on social media. That's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your worship experience. Precious, precious, precious. 
it's time for the offering. I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank you for continuing to give during this time. This is how the work of the kingdom still gets done. There are multiple ways to give. You can still send a check in the mail to 2205 Avenue G, Dickinson, Texas, 77539. You can still come by and drop off your offering on certain days when we are here. We also have online giving. If you go to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash donate, Donate, you can see the ways that we will be able to receive your seed online. We also have PayPal. Dickinson Faith UMC at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. We also are able to take giving through the app Givelify. If you search for Faith UMC Dickinson in the app of Givelify, you will be able to find us and you'll see a picture of the church right on there and you'll be able to give. We thank you for continuing to sow a seed into God's kingdom. Amen. We ask a blessing upon the gifts and the givers. We ask a blessing over those who are able to give and those who are not able to give. And we ask that this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word. Uh, today's message is going to come from the gospel according to Luke, the, ch the 12th chapter, uh, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Again, that is the gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Going to be reading the new revised standard version of God's word today. Amen. Uh, let's see what it has to say for us today. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, 
You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim in a barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. Lord God, let every uh, word of my mouth and meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Allow this to be a word that leads people to a better relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. It is in that name that we pray. Amen. Uh, for the time that we get to spend together today, I'd like to talk a little bit about being rich toward God. Rich toward God. Um, I have a background uh, professionally in technology, but my education is in business. And because of my education in business, I know a little bit about a lot of things when it comes to business, uh, including investing. I don't consider myself the most brilliant investor, I, but I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, I know how to read a balance sheet and an income statement, and I, I know how to read these things. And because I know enough to be dangerous, I stay away from certain fads and uh, certain things that people try to sell pretending to be investments. One of those things I avoid is cryptocurrency. Uh, I believe cryptocurrency is a good thing, uh, but not an investment. It's supposed to be used as a secure means of buying something where it's secure and anonymous. It's not supposed to be an investment. Uh, investors uh, are, are, are out there, pseudo investors, folks trying to get paid. They're touting cryptocurrency as the currency of the future and lining people up to invest now before they become more valuable. The problem is, is cryptocurrency is highly speculative Uh and just like real currencies, cryptocurrencies generate no cash flow. So in order to get a profit, someone's got to pay more for your cryptocurrency than you did. And that is called the greater fool theory of investment. I bought something for $5 and because I bought it for five, I got to sell it for 10 whether it makes money or not. And companies that trade in cryptocurrency, it seems like every week another one is going bankrupt. We cannot put our money into things that won't last. We have to put our money into things that will help the greater good. Here we go. Another pastor talking about money. Yes. You know, interestingly enough, Jesus talked about money. Jesus talked about money more than a lot of things in the Bible. Jesus talked a lot about money, but it seems bad to talk about it in the church. You know, 11 out of uh, the 39 or 40 parables that Jesus told mentioned money. In the gospel, according to Luke, Money is mentioned on an average of one every seven verses. I, I recall recently people getting worked up about a, re, a, a mega church pastor talking about tithing and everybody had their opinions. And I didn't really participate in the back and forth, uh, at least not publicly. 
because I happen to know a sober fact. Most people don't tithe anyway. The average giver in the church gives somewhere around two to two and a half percent of their income. Matter of fact, only according to a couple published reports, only five percent of churchgoers tithe. Um, 1.5 million out of uh, close to 240 million U.S. citizens that identify as Christian, only 1.5 of them tithe. Now, of the people that do tithe, uh, 77% of the people that do tithe give more than 10%. Uh, we are not out here getting rich in the church. <laughs> if every Christian actually tithed, faith organizations would have an extra one point or $139 billion annually. Uh, it's even between people who prefer online giving versus face-to-face -face giving. But while we complain about a pastor talking about tithing and, and we think that people are getting rich off of the church, we're not. The average weekly giver only gives $17 per week or $800 a year. Maybe we should talk a little bit more about money than we do. With the level of bankruptcies and foreclosures and predatory lending, maybe we should talk about that. I am a firm believer that the pastor should be preaching, bring ye tithes into the storehouse, but also out making sure that the people have a living wage. It's not either or, it's both and. The point is, we ought to talk a lot more about money, whether in the church or out of the church. And see, we, we come across a passage in the Bible where Jesus is talking about money. Jesus has been preaching to the crowd in Luke chapter 12, and a young man comes up wanting Jesus to resolve a dispute between this young man and his brother about money. Resolving disputes was common in the Bible. Moses did it. There's also a whole book about it called Judges. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20, uh, 21 tells us how the sons are supposed to divide the inheritance from their father. But I guess this young man thought that he did not get his fair share. And Jesus doesn't make a judgment or a ruling on it, but instead takes his time to use this as an opportunity to educate the people, not about money, but about priorities. Uh, you, you see, the rich fool in the parable uh, uh, had a preoccupation with possessions. Uh, he put too much security in self-sufficiency and was under the grasp of greed. The rich fool thought he knew the future. He thought that things would only get better because things were good now. Other people uh, have this same thought. I remember working in retail and learning that even though I was a worker in retail, the manager had a goal that they had to sell for the entire store that day. And, and one of the places I worked Ironically, it's out of business now, but one of the places I worked, the manager basically told me that if you sold $105 on this day last year, they said you needed to sell $110 on the day that you're going. And I said, but what happens if there's an anomaly? What happens if somebody just came out of the blue and bought a whole bunch of stuff and it was a one-time gift? Why would they continue to expect the next time to be better? He said, that's just the way it goes. Uh, but it's not just in retail. If a large co corporation turns a profit this year, they expect to turn a larger profit next year. And if they don't turn a larger profit the next year, somebody is getting fired. We always, we always expect tomorrow 
to be greater than yesterday. And so did the rich fool in the parable. But life is full of ups and downs. Life is full of transitions. It is not always sunshine and daffodils. And that goes for money, too. You see, when Jesus brought up the story of the rich par- rich fool, uh, he was not being anti-rich. He was being anti-greed. Take care, he says, to be on your guard against all kinds of what? Greed. In verse 15, he says that life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. He warns them to take care. Uh, The Greek word meaning to see, uh, to understand, to comprehend. Jesus is saying you all don't get it. Open your eyes and guard against greed in all its forms. You see, money is not just about the possessions and, 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 and the accumulation of wealth. It's about priorities. Most of the decisions that we make about money are not rational, uh, thought out, scientific, data based decisions. We make money uh, decisions based on our emotions. I'm going to treat myself. I deserve it. Uh, I've been hungry before, so I'm going to put a little away for a rainy day. Uh, My grandfather used to say a penny in the pile, make a dollar after a while. My grandfather also used to say, don't ever give up your last. You got to be able to stack a dollar on a dollar. Most of our decisions, most of the things we do when it comes to money are not about money, but about the behaviors we learned or grew up around. And so when Jesus talked about money in the Bible as much as he did, he talked about money as much as he did because he was really getting to your behavior. Open your eyes and guard against greed in all forms. We understand, though, that there's a need for security and security was important in ancient times when when it was very easy to steal things. Uh, when we didn't have high tech options, we didn't have cameras and Wi-Fi and locks and 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 and, and smart homes. Uh, and, and so. We would have to look into the darkness and make sure that no one is lurking in the alley. Keep your wits about you. He says, don't let greed grab you. And rob you of your life. Uh, Jesus means that greed is a detour that quickly becomes a one way street to a dead end. There's no cul de sac. You, you, You can't turn around. Once greedy, always greedy. He's saying that once you've grabbed it, it's got you and you're hooked. And it seems like it'll never be satisfied. Uh, You'll never have enough. That's why Jesus says uh, life does not consist of an abundance of possessions. Because when you get to one level, that won't be enough. You'll get accustomed to that level and keep going. So Jesus is telling us to think about more than just how much money we have in our pockets. The alternative to greed is generosity. Um, Like the widow whom Jesus and the disciples watched when she donated in the temple, she taught the the disciples that generosity is more than an amount. It's also an attitude. It's not measured by how much we give, but how much it costs us. Truly, I tell you, he said in Luke 21, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of poverty, has put in all she had to live on. Jesus does not pull any punches when he calls the rich fool a fool. The rich fool thought everything was great and was going to be even better tomorrow. Uh, But the word used for fool in the text uh, not only means uh, without reason, senseless, foolish, or inconsiderate. The word 
uh, used for it is, is closely related to also the word that's used for the diaphragm and the midriff during the breathing process, inhaling and exhaling. Basically, when Jesus was calling the rich fool a fool in this parable, he was calling them a bag of wind. You fool, you big bag of wind, you are partying, partying like there is no tomorrow. But in fact, there's no tonight. This very night, your soul is required of you. Luke 12 is inviting us to place our trust in something more durable than the, the volatile global economy. Instead of banking on building bigger barns, God invites us into the eternal economy of God's grace and mercy. And the good news is, is this is available at every season of the year. You see, Jesus is not anti-rich. Being rich and possessing an abundance of belongings is not the problem. The problem is forgetting God. Forgetting to get down on your knees and say, thank you, God, for everything that you have given to me. Thank you for the life, health and strength. Thank you for putting food on my table. Thank you for putting clothes on my backs. God is the giver of all things. You see, this man says when he, he's in, in the, the, the rich parable, he thinks that he created the abundance. But the text says the land produced abundantly. Not the man. The land produced abundantly. It was the land that produced this crop and the rich man had nothing to do with it. God gave him the blessings. And so we can be rich towards God. That means using resources to benefit one's neighbor, someone in need just like the Good Samaritan did. Being rich towards God means intentionally listening to Jesus' word. Being rich towards God means prayerfully trusting God will provide for our needs of life. It means giving alms to establish a lasting treasure in heaven. It's not about the money. It's about your mindset. Do you love those riches more than you love God? Are you using those things for only your own personal benefit and not helping anybody else? Being rich is not the bad thing. Having the funds is not the bad thing. What are your priorities when you get them? We have to be willing to be generous for God. Because God was generous for us. I can't think of anything worth more than someone's only begotten child who pays the ultimate sacrifice so that we might have access to the kingdom, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Where are our priorities at? Again, it's not about the funding. It's about how you feel about it and what you do when you've gotten it. We have gotten the most expensive, greatest gift in the world in access to salvation and access to eternal life in Christ Jesus. How can we not be generous to others when we've gotten the greatest gift of all? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Pray with me, please. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from above. We thank you for this opportunity to gather and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, we ask that this word go forth with the help of your Holy Spirit to your holy people in your holy church, for your holy kingdom. That if there is someone that desires to know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins, they will ask, what must I do to become saved? Let this message bless those who heard it and those who will hear it later. 
Let it be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest for your kingdom. 30, 60, 100 fold. It is in your son's precious, perfect, powerful name, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The doors of the church are open and they've been open for over 2000 years. This is an opportunity to connect and respond to the preached word. The doors of the church are open for those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the pardoning of your sins. So if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, this is an opportunity to connect. If you do know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins and are looking for a new church home, I can recommend one for you here at Faith UMC in Dickinson, Texas. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and want to get to know him, but don't necessarily think faith will be a good fit, I am okay with that. Once we get you on the right path of salvation and knowing Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, I will write a letter to whatever Bible-based church you decide to join. Keyword being Bible-based. There are a bunch of ways for you to connect if that has touched you in some way. You can text CONNECT to 281-336-1698. Again, that is 281-336-1698. You can call us at 281-337-6036. Again, you can call us at 281-337-6036. You can email us at dickinsonfaithumc at gmail.com and you can inbox our Facebook page. We would love to connect with you and develop a relationship and get you uh, closer to us as a church family. Now, may we live out the word that we have heard, receive all that we have prayed for and be blessed so that we can bless others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.